Hello, and welcome to Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. I'm Susie Parker Goins. I'm a channel, an energy healer, a past life explorer, teacher, guide. My links are in the description box uh, for podcasts, websites, information about what I'm doing, financial support, and contact info. So please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share the love. I upload on Mondays and Thursdays. <sighs> Thanks for your support. So last week, I talked about easy, do-it-yourself ways to identify past lives. And they were they were easy, minimal equipment, immediate gratification techniques to get you started. Well, this week, I want to delve a little deeper. You know, looking at the why would you want to look at past lives? What impact past lives may have had on you in this life? And ways in which to look at it, which require a little more time, a little more thought, some effort. And then next Monday we'll have a meditation that delves deeper into it. Okay, first I want to define some of the terms that I use. I refer to the past life persona as the personality. That way there's a separation between you in this current life and you in the previous life. And then there's the process of resolution. Resolution. And that's when you talk to the personality from the past life to get the life lesson wisdom, uh, to exchange love and gratitude, and then to release them back to the universe. And it's during the resolution process in which healing occurs. And then finally is soul purpose, life lesson, life wisdom. You know, they're all close to the same thing. It's just that intention you set out to satisfy, to do what, whatever goal you're trying to meet in that previous life. Okay, so now on to it. First off, why would you want to look at past lives? Why do you want to release them? Oh, well, there's a lot of times you bring forward issues from previous lives that are affecting your current life. Um, not only are you going to be looking at a past life issue in a new light, but you might have traveled with some of the same players before, or you could be revisiting a locale. An exploration can show you how an issue got its start a really long time ago. Looking at previous lives also allows you to look at that trauma. Um, sometimes it's as easy as just knowing that that happened to release the problem in this life. Or other times it can require a lot more inner depth, a lot more deeper inner work. Uh, so there are times when seeking professional help is advisable. Uh, regression to therapists, they're a thing. It's cool. Okay, so now Ainsley McLeod, he is, um, he's a psychic and an author, and he made up a list of 10 big fears which people will bring forward from past lives. First off is a fear of authority. So someone was, your past life persona could have been abused by a person in power. Uh, two is a fear of loss wartime experiences or lifetimes in which you lost everything or a very or a, or a loved one that can bring that forward three is a fear of inferiority inferiority and it's that feeling of not good enough those lifetimes are one in which one is either enslaved or they have no control over their own lives then four is a betrayal of trust and that's more than just a physical stab in the back. That's the metaphorical or a political stab in the back. Five is a fear of failure. And those could be lifetimes in which the soul's goal was not accomplished or the lifetime was cut short. Early death, that sort of thing. Six is a fear of intimacy. Um, and that could have stemmed from lifetimes in which one loved and lost or Physical intimacy was forced upon them, like in rape or physical abuse. Seven is a fear of self-expression. Uh, you know, you could have been there. Could have been negative consequences when some, when a personality stood up for themselves, or it could be a personality that did not stand up for themselves. 
um, you know, that whole hand over the mouth, forced to be quiet thing. Eight is a fear of powerlessness. Again, that's when we're lives of being enslaved or in which you didn't have any self-government. Governance. Governance, that's the word. Um, you weren't able to control your own life in that lifetime. And that can, you see how they kind of tie in together fear of authority, fear of inferiority, you know, feelings of that. Um, fear of death is when a, a previous a personality had a particularly traumatic end. And let's see, that was nine. So ten is a fear of rejection. Um, there could be a current life issue where you you feel like you're not being included, which could stem from a past life of being shunned or um, excommunicated. Okay, so it's generally accepted that when you face your fears, you're able to move forward. Well, if you feel if you feel you are ready, um, regression is a viable and effective option. So what I've got listed off next is. A few ways you can explore past lives to get an, a deeper idea of what's going on. Um, their methods require a little more time, a little more effort, a little equipment, but they can open the door for healing for you on so many levels. So first off is free writing. Free writing is when you sit down with pen and paper or maybe a keyboard and a computer screen and you just write. Write whatever comes into your head. If you want to set the intention, it's like, what is it that's surrounding this issue? What is my fear of this? And you just start writing. Um, I, I used a little company time once, and I uncovered a life as an Appalachian backwoods woman who happened to know the secrets of the family father. So it was fascinating. I had a family, and I saw the cabin. It was very cool. Um, another form of writing is automatic writing, and that's when you bring your guides through. So you ask your guides. You could even ask that personality to come through and say, tell me about you. And I've done that on my laptop and covered a lifetime. Um, yeah, I don't remember the specifics of it now, but it's here in the file somewhere. But, you know, authors do it. Why not? Next up is scrying. And that's when you use a reflective surface to divine information. Uh, you can you can use a crystal ball. I have a friend who's very good at that. Or you can use fire or clouds. There's a thing called a black mirror that is it's painted black, and it is a reflective surface. So hence black mirror. Um, you can even close your eyes and figure out and see if you're getting information behind your behind your eyelids. Um, that's the beauty of it. You can do it wherever you want. I'm not really good at it, so I really can't give you any specifics about it. Uh, maybe that'll be an interview. Oh, well. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but there was a friend of mine uh, years ago who said she did see a past life. She saw her shape transform, and she used a regular mirror and lots of candlelight, so the lighting was very low. And she set the intention, and there was a different form of her. I thought that was fascinating. Um, two other methods I'm not very good at. Okay, one of them I don't have patience with, and that's astrology. Maybe that's typical Aries. I don't know. But um, And the other one is hand analysis or palm reading. You can use those methods if you have that time or focus, which I don't, to, um, to get that information. I use tarot and oracle cards. There are tons of spreads out there on Pinterest and through internet research where you can find out information from a past life. It can be as easy or as complicated as you want. Uh, the, in general, the past life information, well, all soul information is held in the Akasha or the Akashic records. Lots of people access them and how it looks to you is how it looks to you. It looks to me differently. So um, I know people who have gone in and said it looks like this great big library with your name on 
on a book and you pull out the book and you can open it up a channel friend of mine um, would go through like she was going through um, a filing filing cabinet that was that was fun for me when I'm doing past lives I see this great big map in front of me and I will scan it and I'll get hits on it it's like oh you were born this is this this is this and it and it's multi-dimensional uh, let's see so it, it it's up to you I mean you the Akasha is going to appear to you how it's going to appear how you're most comfortable with it and then finally we've got meditations la la uh, you can sit quietly on your own and, and meditate and open up to the information. You can listen to pre-recorded ones like I do. Um, there are other ones on YouTube. It's totally fine. Um, and of course there are my podcasts. I don't know how I'm going to react to hearing my own voice. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and meditations only require time and quiet. So time and quiet. But exploring your past lives to find out the origin of current life phobias and releasing them, it really can result in some transformation, a consciousness shift, and it's an opportunity to grow on a spiritual level. So next week I'm going to have a, um, an in-depth meditation uh, looking at very at, at deeper issues of a past life. So until next time, blessings. <laughs>